the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise be to God. Good morning and welcome to Games Virtual Church Sunday Service. Praise God. I am Elder Elisha Small, and we at Global Apostolic Movement, also known as GAME, under the leadership of Chief Apostle LaShawn Reese, and Pastor Beverly Cole would like to thank everyone for tuning into this live broadcast this morning. Praise God. We are excited that you have decided to join us as we prepare to hear from our very own Pastor Beverly Cole with a word from the Lord. So before we get started, we invite you to click the share button, share this broadcast and tag others so that they can also experience this phenomenal service, praise God, that we are about to have. We welcome you to worship God with us and receive the word of the Lord in the comfort of your own homes, praise God, with us as we prepare our hearts and minds to give God all the glory. We also would like to invite those who would like to be members of this virtual church ministry if you are interested, praise God, please send us a DM message on Global Apostolic Movement Facebook page for more information. If you would like to know more about Game GAM, praise God, and our belief, praise God, or submit a prayer request, please visit our website at gamemovement.org. Now for our prayer, Father God, we thank you for this day that you have given us, praise God. We know that everything we have come from you, the only living God who created everything that exists. We thank you, Father, for bringing us into your midst this morning. You said in your word, we're two or three together, you are there also in the midst, praise God. And we are here today, Lord, live broadcasting your word, praise God, to everyone who has an ear to hear what you are saying to the word. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, to let your word transcend into the hearts and the minds of the listeners today, Father. Change their hearts and their mind. those that need healing. Let your word enter into their lives and heal them, Lord. Those that need blessing, let your word bless them, Lord. Those that need deliverance, let your word deliver them, Lord. Those that need forgiveness, Lord, let your word forgive them, Lord. We know that all things are possible to we that believe. And we ask you for these members, Lord, that we have on the line with us today, Lord, that you would give us strength, Lord, that may, we may be able to survive and live in this evil generation. You said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, that if we keep our minds focused on you and not the things of the world, that you would never leave us or forsake us, that you would be with us always until the end of the world. We believe your word. We live by your word. And as the pastor preached this morning, praise God, put the word in our heart, Lord, in our mind, Lord, and let it go forth with power to convict, to save, to deliver, praise God, to heal, Lord, because that's what your word does. Praise God, our service is now in the hands of our pastor. Praise be to God. Pastor Beverly Cole, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Awesome, awesome. Welcome, awesome prayer event. Uh, sorry, Elder Small, God bless you. And I thank God for the fire that you have released on the line already. Because one of the things that we do know, we always say this, and I know we mean it from the uh, depths of our hearts. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And I want to start off a little bit differently. We're going to always open up with praise and prayer, but I just have a reminder that I'm sent to tell you about, and I'll get into the text and everything. But today, I just bless the Lord for each and every one of you that has joined on via Zoom or even Facebook Live. I just praise the Lord because this is indeed, amen, the day that he has made. And when we say it, I don't want it to be or us to say it as though it's just some religious or traditional thing that we say. But this is indeed the day the Lord has made. And I just want to bring to your remembrance, first of all, let me give honor to God because he alone is our life. Amen. He alone is the author and the finisher of our faith. He alone is our creator. He alone is Abba. There is none like him in all the earth. Uh, 
And I want to just acknowledge our chief apostle, LaShawn Reese, amen, for this global apostolic movement. It's a vision that God had given to her. And I also want to acknowledge her husband, senior pastor, Odin Reese, amen, and the two, as I say, and I'll continue to say it, because I believe the more we say a thing, the more it brings strength, amen, that the two walk together, amen, because they are agreed. They're bringing forth the ministry. They're going forth, and no matter what, they don't stop, they don't quit, and whatever the vision is, God has given to them. I just bless God because they are indeed fulfilling. Amen. Because once they finish this race, they can always just relax and be content and knowing and hearing the words, uh, well done, my good and faithful servants. So again, I am Pastor Beverly Cole, and I just want to read this passage of scripture into your hearing. Because see, I want to try to ignite you. I want you to remember, amen, what the word of God says. And I'm going to be reading out of Psalms and it's going to be 103 and I'm going to read in verses one through five. And it says, bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deep within me bless his name. See, it's calling you to bless his name, no matter what you're going through. Can I just tell you, if you will just begin to bless him, things turn when you praise, things move when you praise, you're shifting the atmosphere in your praise. Bless the Lord and affectionately praise the name of the Lord, oh my soul, and do not forget his benefits. See, when you remember his benefits, you can't help but rejoice. When you remember what he's done for you, amen. When you remember how he brought you up and picked you up and turned you around. When you remember the goodness of the Lord and all of his benefits, you can't help but rejoice because this is the day that he has made. I don't know what's in store for the rest of my day. I just know that in the beginning, I have full use of my limbs. I just know right now that I won't let a rock cry out in my place. I just know know right now that I'm going to encourage. As a matter of fact, I'm going to command my soul to bless the Lord because he has given us all of these benefits. Verse three says, who heals, who forgives, I'm sorry, all of our sins, or it may be iniquities, depending on who you, where you're reading, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems our life from uh, the pit, who crowns you lavishly, mm with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth or your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. I wanna stay right there. And that's basically where I'm gonna come from today because I was called and the Lord, I told you I'm assignment driven in this season. Whatever the Lord wants and however he wanna do it and whatever he wants to say, I'm a surrendered vessel today. And every day I try to be, I'm not perfect, amen? but I thank him that he's patient with me. I'm not perfect, but I thank him that the blood covers me and I'm gonna do all that I can do because people of God, we have been called to be the salt of the earth. We have called to be the light of this world. And as we know, you can turn on the TV, you can go outside, you can look everywhere, you can hear it. It's coming all over the newsways, airways. Even when you're out in the stores, people are fighting, they're going through so many different changes, but we are the light. And whenever we show up, darkness has to be dispelled because light and darkness can't occupy the same space. So when you go on your job, something ought to be illuminating from you. When you go in the store, something ought to be emitting from us. It needs to be the light. It needs to be the gospel. It needs to be a smile. It needs to be a kind word because you don't know what people are going through. And because we are the light of this world, when you show up, hallelujah, things got to scatter. When you show up, and it even ought to bring joy to that person that's downhearted. It doesn't mean that you have to go over and beat them over the head with the word. You are the walking word, amen? We are called to be the living epistles of God. And somebody just need a hug. You can't hug everybody all the time. But somebody just needs a smile or a kind word or just a little bit of encouragement. You are called to be the salt of this world and also the light. And it's time for us to rise up and to begin to remember who we are. And that's going to be the topic. Remember who you are. Mm. You are an eagle and it's time to soar. The topic, remember who you are. You are in a, an eagle and it's time to soar. 
It's time because we all know that according to Ecclesiastes 3, that there is a time and a season for all things. And I just want to welcome and just let you know, we've entered into an autumn season. We've entered into a new season, amen. We're talking about it is October the 1st. We're in the ninth month of the year. Some would say we're at the end of the year. We're in the fourth quarter, if you will. We're in the season to where changes needs to be made. We're in a season to where when you think of it, even in the natural, this is our harvest time. But if you forgot who you were, if you don't remember his benefits, if you don't remember that you are uh, created in his image. If you don't remember that the Lord is out with Jehovah Jireh, he makes provision, provide, mm, he is our provider. He makes provisions for us. If you don't remember that he is Jehovah Rophah, he is the healer, remember, and the verse in 103 says that he healeth all of our diseases. There are times when we're going to have to become steadfast and unmovable, and no matter what you hear, and no matter what you see, you've got to set your faith like Flint, and you shall not and cannot and you will not be moved because you are an eagle and you've been called to soar. And I just want to tell you a little bit about the eagle. But when I talked about in the end of the scripture, Psalms 103 and 5, it says that he will renew, renew. Mm. He will renew you. When I looked up the word renew, it means to become new. Mm. To begin again, we talked about that last week, it's time to begin again, to resume, to go about doing what God has called us to do, because I believe people of God, we have forgotten, we've forgotten what manner of woman or man we are, we have forgotten what the word says about us, because if we remember, if we hold fast, if we walk according to the word, based on the word, because he is the word, and know that great is he that is in us than he that is in the world, we won't continue to walk around with our heads dry. We won't continue to become weary, even in well-doing. We won't become. I'm not saying you're not going to get tired, but I am saying that it's going to teach you how to press. In this season, we need to learn how to persevere. In this season, we have to get up. Not only just get up, but it's time for you to soar. Amen. And it means to restore. To restore. Mm. Vigor. Perfection as our strength is being renewed, amen? It means to make new, spiritual, to regenerate, to refresh, to rejuvenate, to renovate. See, sometimes we want something new, but we don't want to go through the process of renovation. I remember last year when my house flooded, and they had to come in, and they did all manner of things in my kitchen, and they began to pull out my cabinets, the walls, they pulled up the floor. It looked bare. And I know that for some of us in this season, it doesn't look like where we're going. It's not looking like what we professed or confessed. It's not looking like my affirmations. It doesn't look like anything is changing. But can I tell somebody today, just because the mm, vultures are circling, it doesn't mean it's dead. In other words, just because it doesn't look like what you think it ought to be like, just because some things had to be broken down and pulled away. Some things had to be removed. Can I tell you, you're in a new season. I came to remind you who you are. And it's time now for us to be walking. It's time for us to soar. And as God reinvigorates you, as he rejuvenates you by the washing of the water of the word, as he begins to talk to you through even my voice, I begin to herald into the atmosphere that you are an eagle and it's time to soar. Do you not understand that you're attitude will reflect your altitude. Because if you're bowed down, if you're slumped over, if you will allow the enemy to come in and continue to depress, in other words, to depress something, to me it means to press down on it. If you will continue to allow him to press down, can I remind you who you are today? You are an eagle and it's time to soar. And I'm going to give you a few characteristics about an eagle. And it says here that an eagle, mm, eagle is a different type of species, we all know. And when we look at the uh, bird kingdom, if you will, or the animal kingdom, there are certain animals that stand head and shoulders above the rest. And for us, it's the eagle. And if you go up throughout scripture, there's so many uh, metaphors about the eagle that the Lord brings about. He even considers our uh 
refers to himself as an eagle. That's how we get under his wings and he protects us. But a few things that I want to remind you about an eagle. See, the one thing about an eagle, an eagle flies alone at high altitudes. So in other words, say for instance, a prey or a predator was to leap on an eagle. Do you not know that the higher the eagle flies, then after a sudden the hawk or whatever attached itself to the eagle because it's in such a different atmosphere. It's in a, at a different altitude. He don't even have to fight. He just have to keep, um, he keeps soaring higher and higher. And the higher he climbs, then after a while, that predator, that prey, whatever it is that has latched onto him will fall off. Can I tell you that the higher you soar, that whatever's trying to bind you, whatever's trying to restrict you, whatever's trying to press you down, whatever's trying to hold you back from walking in your promise in this season, all you got to do is to continue to elevate, continue to rise. And another thing about an eagle, and because when you understand your position as an eagle, it says that the eagle flies alone. In other words, you want to be have like-minded people around you. I was studying and we were talking, me and my daughter were talking about the different type of birds and we were looking at the pigeon. And we all know that pigeons, uh, people do eat them <laughs> and they're squabs. I wouldn't eat one and I can't say I haven't, but I'm just, I'm just bringing that analogy. But if you remember or you look around, you will see that a pigeon is a type of scavenger and it goes around and it eats all manner of things. <laughs> the pigeons you will normally find at parks and uh Maybe in uh, downtown, depending on where you are, wherever there's a lot of building statues, you will normally find pigeons. You are not a pigeon and you don't you very rarely see a pigeon just flying. Yeah, it will go from place to place and it can fly but it doesn't have the same altitude. It doesn't have the same mindset. It doesn't have the same strength because while the pigeon is on the ground scavenging, when the Lord told us in Ephesians to get into him, to be seated in heavenly places, that doesn't remind me of a pigeon. That doesn't keep me walking around on the ground or going and peeping and going throughout different places in order to be noticed, in order to do. They also carry messages. Some of them we do remember Remember about the um, messenger pigeons that they would tie messages on their legs and it would cause them to ride or go to other places in order to deliver the message. But when you are an eagle, you don't just carry mess. You don't carry anybody's message. As a matter of fact, as an eagle, the only true message you ought to carry is the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we go forth and we begin to preach the good news of the gospel, chains are going to be broken. When we go forth, and we begin to soar when we begin to tell others about the good news that you don't have to remain this way. And sometimes that might be when your testimony is needed because oftentimes we want to preach at them, but we don't want them to know where we came from. In this season, it's nothing wrong with being naked and unashamed. It's nothing wrong with sharing with others about how God brought you out, how he lifted you up, how he turned you around. Because see, if the truth be told, none of us have been perfect because the word of God says that we were born into iniquity. In other words, when they, at the fall, the whole world changed. Now we have been introduced to sin. We have a sinful nature. Paul says that there's a warring going on in our members. It's our flesh against the spirit because see, your flesh don't want to humble itself. Your flesh don't want to back down. But when you realize that you're an eagle and you don't have to wander around, you don't have to do all manner of things, you can begin to take strength in that and know that, you know what? I'm not judging you, but I can't hang around you because where you are is not where I'm going and not where I want to be. See, God has called me up higher. He told me it's time for me to soar because there's a place he has me to go and to be and I can't get there walking I can't get there just eating all manner of junk I can't get there just by wondering and hoping somebody is going to help me get there I have to realize and remember that I'm an eagle and I've been called to soar I've been called to do the things that God has called me to do 
and you have been set apart. Because when you think about being separate, when you're thinking about soaring, you at a different altitude. I'm not saying you're better than anyone. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, according to Deuteronomy 14 and 2, God has said in his word, I'm going to read it in your hearing. It says, you have been set apart as holy to the Lord, your God. And he has chosen you to be his treasured possession out of all the people of the earth. Mm. Don't you understand that you are a treasured possession? God has called you out and he set us apart. So for us that are walking around and say us, because I've been there, I don't know if I'm still there, but I'm trying to be mindful of the company I keep. Because the word of God also says that evil communication corrupts good manners. And if we all remember the old saying or the old cliche, if you lay down with dogs long enough, you're going to get up with fleas. See, I'm not trying to get any more on me that I already have. As a matter of fact, I'm asking him to remove the things out of me that don't give him pleasure. To remove and begin to do introspection on me. Because see, I don't want to be so weighted down that I can't soar. I don't want to be so weighted down that I can't move to my next level. I don't want to be so weighted down or depressed or oppressed to where mm, I can't let you know of the good news. See, that's not what an eagle is called to do. And another thing, and I'm telling you because see, you were called to soar. So if you don't remember anything else, when you think about an eagle, they fly alone and at high altitudes. You don't see a group of them. You don't see a group. Now they have a place they can go huddle. We call that the church. And by the way, you're more than welcome to join mm, GAM Virtual Church because we are a church for those that can't get out. We're a church for those who don't know where to go in this season. We're a church. We are that living mm, Ooh, organism, because we are an organism. We're not an organization because the greater one is in us because we're wanting to see you grow and to thrive as we grow and thrive. And we welcome you to be a part of this movement because we're here to soar. We're not pigeons. We're not chickens. We're not vultures. And one other thing about an eagle that you can add, remember, they fly alone and at high altitudes. An eagle has great vision. Mm. And so when I think about the word vision, and I also think about focus, because see, the word of God tells us, mm, even when we look at it in Matthew 14, 22, and 33, y'all all know the account of Jesus when he was walking on water and he told Peter to get out of the boat. See, because of the evil's eagle's excellent vision, they're able to see and to track their prey. They don't lose focus of their prey. And I cannot tell you, so don't lose focus of your prey because the word says that God will not have us ignorant of his devices. So I'm not saying stay that focus to where you can't move. I'm saying stay focused to where you know who he is, what he's doing so you can call him out by name so that you can bind him, so that you can be alert, so that you can be uh you know what the word says in Peter, that he is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. See, when you keep your eyes open, when you remain steadfast and you don't take your focus off of God, you understand that there is nothing that he can't do. There is nothing he can't bring you through. But when you allow your focus to be shifted, when you allow your vision or you change your focus or you look differently, or even the vision that you have laid out for yourself doesn't like it look like it's coming to pass because the word of God says without a vision a man perish or the nations perish. In other words, you have to have a vision. You have to have good focus and you have to remain focused. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. I don't care what's latching on. I don't care what's trying to attach. I don't care what you have to give up. I don't know when the winds begin to blow just like Peter did. He asked Jesus, he said, if you be the Lord, bid me to come. In other words, call me out because if you call me out, I know I can make it. If you call me by name, I know even underneath my feet, the water that no longer going to rage. And it says that when he got out, he was so laid to focus, I believe, on Jesus that he didn't look around him, but he wasn't moved by the storm. And so when he stepped out of the boat, he remained focused. And it says, then he saw the wind. 
I don't know how people can see the winds. I see the effects of the wind. But he said that he saw the wind. In other words, he saw this thing that was contrary to where his focus was. And he allowed his eyes to be taken off. Can I tell somebody in this season, because you have been given laser vision, you need to focus your sights on the Lord and don't move. Don't be moved. Be determined to be steadfast and unmovable. In this season, change is happening. We're in an autumn, we're in a new season. So what you did in the summer and even what you wore in the summer, you can carry into this season. <coughs> Excuse me, can I tell somebody? It's time for you to unpack some bags. It's time for you to put off some stuff. It's time for you to put some things away because in that season, it was necessary, but you're entering into a new season to everything there is a season. Uh, you're entering to a new season. This is a season of harvest. It's harvest time, people of God. And I want everything that God has promised me. So as long as you remain focused, remain focused on your promise. Have a vision and remain there. Your life depends on it. And no matter what people say, no matter what you get in the mail, no matter the phone calls that you get, remember you are an eagle and you've been called to soar. The Lord said, remind them of the attributes and the characteristics of an eagle, because that's how I see them. God don't see us walking around begging. He knows that we are his children and he wants us to soar. The third thing about an eagle, an eagle is fearless. And we've all seen eagles overtake some things. We all know that eagles have those long talons. We all know that they have the little beak that is hooked over for them to capture their prey. We understand that by the same token that the eagle is fearless, we too need to be fearless. According to 2 Timothy 1 and 7, in the Good News version, it reads, for God didn't give us a spirit of fear. I'm going to read it this way. For God didn't give us a cowardly spirit, but a spirit of power and love and of good judgment. Some say self-control. In other words, we weren't given that spirit. So as eagles, I know there are different things. And you know that some eagles have the ability uh, to lift eight pounds or carry a certain amount of weight uh, in the beaks as well as in their talents and it overrules as a matter of fact some of them even heavier than what they are but because they have this divine ability because God has anointed them can I tell you you've been anointed to soar can I tell you that the enemy can't keep you down because the word of God says that in this world you would have trials and tribulations but to be of good cheer to be of good courage because God has already overcome the world so I came to tell somebody no matter how the enemy is coming at you. Can I tell you, don't allow fear to overtake you. You weren't given a cowardly spirit. You weren't given the spirit of timidity. You weren't given a spirit to go back and not think that you can overcome. Because according to Psalms, the word of God says that with my God, I can leap over a wall. With my God, I can run through a troop. Remember David, he reminded me of an eagle. Because see, he wasn't wondered. He wasn't bothered by the taunts of the enemy, uh, about his Goliath. Uh, the one thing he knew that God had already brought him through. Uh, can I tell you, it's time for you to remember uh, how he brought you out the last time, uh, how he brought you out the time before that, uh, how he brought you out the time, the time, and the time before that, uh, that he never changes. Uh, he never loses his power. Uh, he is an old time God. And no matter what, uh, you remain steadfast. Uh, don't let go. Don't buckle under the weight of the pressure uh, of the enemy because God God did not give you a spirit of fear. fear. He's given you this dunamis power. He's already anointed you with power and authority. You do understand that you have the ability to trample over snakes and scorpions. You have the ability to cast out demons in his name. See, I have to remind you that you're an eagle and you don't have to walk around. You don't have to walk slumped over. You were called to soar and by whatever means necessary, because the word of God says that the kingdom of violence Mm. The kingdom suffers violence, 
but the violent take it by force. Can I get you to get a different spirit, get a different mindset? And we bind the spirit of fear and we lose it from its assignment to keep you inoperative and ineffective, to keep you in doubt, to keep you bowed down and low, to keep you frustrated and depressed and frustrated. I bind it and I lose it from its assignment. And I decree and declare this day that it's time to soar. I decree and declare this day that your season is changing. We've entered into a new season and it's harvest time. Whether you know it or not, I came to make that announcement. But God told me to tell you to remember who you are. You are an eagle and it's time to soar. Another thing about an eagle, they are tenacious. And let me tell you about an eagle. One of the things about an eagle being tenacious, it means that an eagle is determined, is persistent, has tenacious faith. You have to be, can you imagine seeing a prey or maybe seeing something so down in the water uh, because they love fish? but they also eat other animals, but they see it in their laser vision because they have laser vision and they're seeing their prey and then they swoop down and they come up with it. See, when you become tenacious, you're not going to let anything get in your way. When you become tenacious, you're going to hold on to something. I remember just like we talked about last week about Jacob wrestling with the angel or with the man in Genesis 32, 22 through 32 when he says that I'm not gonna let you go until you bless me. See, Jacob had that tenacious spirit. He was so determined that whatever God says I'm gonna have, I gotta become tenacious. In other words, I can't be moved by what I see. In other words, I can't be moved by the bills that are coming. I can't be moved when my bank account is showing negative zero. But even in being tenacious, I have to have God for wisdom so that I don't keep putting myself in that same predicament, in the same situations. You know, they said that it's a fool who keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. Can I tell you that in this season of being tenacious, you've also got to be determined not to remain the way you were to be determined that God, by whatever means necessary, I'm not staying in this pit. I'm not going to die here, but I'm going to live. And I'm going to declare to everyone around me that this is the Lord's doing. Because when I added it up, it didn't make sense. When I tried to fight it, it didn't make sense. When I was between a rock and a hard place, it didn't make sense. When I needed groceries and I didn't know where they were going to come from, it didn't make sense. I couldn't figure it out. But when I remembered who he was and who I was, he said, Beverly, all you got to do is get up and soar. I don't need you flapping. This is not the season of struggle. This is the season to soar because you remembered that I've got you. I told you not to worry about what you're going to eat or drink. I told you, but if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I'm going to add everything to you. But can I tell you in this season to become tenacious? And another thing about an eagle, because they know who they are and they know who God has called them to be. The eagle is the only bird that doesn't have a problem with the storm. It says that an eagle will perch itself on the heights, maybe on a cliff or maybe even a tree, depending on where they are, they will perch and they will gauge. Remember, they have this extraordinary vision and they can see the storm coming a mile away. And as they see the storm coming, most of us will take cover, right? Most birds may cower back, but not the eagle. It said that the eagle will look to that storm and not only will it look to it, it begin to advance toward it. In other words, it begins to fly into the storm. And once it gets to that altitude and it begins to fly. It says that the wind begins to elevate the eagle and it causes it to go higher. So the eagle is not actually going into the storm, but it wasn't fearful because of its tenacity, because it was fearless. It knew that if I can get through it and get to it, I'm not going to run away from it. In other words, I'm trying to tell you there are going to be storms in your life, but this is not the season to cower down and to quit. This is the season to be like that eagle and to fly into it just like David Col confronted Goliath. Can I tell you, you cannot conquer what you are not willing to confront. And so the eagle sees the storm and he takes off into the storm and those winds 
The word calls them contrary winds. Those winds begin to blow. And the more it blows, the more it turns, the higher the eagle goes. I came to remind you that you're an eagle. And don't let the storms of life take you out. Don't let the storms of life cripple you. We all have them. But we've got to learn who we are. If you are created in the image of God, and we are, that's what the word says, we've been born again because we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We've been given extraordinary authority and power. We've been given, we have been anointed to step on the enemy's head. We have been anointed and grace to speak to a thing and it has to obey. The word of God in Job 22 and 28 says, if we decree a thing, it shall be established. We can speak just like Jesus spoke to the storm. Somebody needs to tell your storm to be still. Somebody needs to tell your storm that you're not taking me out. I'm going to fly over you. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to even struggle. I'm just going to extend my wings and allow the Lord to lift me higher and higher because with my God, I can run through a troop with my God. I can leap over walls and with my God because he is with me. He is for me. Who and what can be against me? It's time to soar, people of God. Eagles, they don't eat dead things. Not only are they tenacious, but they don't eat dead things. What do you mean by that, Pastor? What I mean, the word of God says that, mm. excuse me. <laughs> the word of God says that we are to live by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. In other words, when we want to eat, we have to eat fresh manna. Matthew 6 and 11 reads, and they pray. He said, give us our daily bread. Amen. And when you think about the children of Israel and they were in the wilderness, you can find that in Exodus 16, 2 through 31. You can read it when you're at your leisure. But it's saying that when they were hungry, that God, God rained down manna from heaven. But after they got into the promised land, it said that the manna ceased. And as the manna ceased and they were told to gather it, and as they were gathering it, they had to get enough for that day's portion. Because if they gathered more than they needed for them and their family, they couldn't set it aside. I believe God did it so they wouldn't get stale. Some of you are going on stale word. What you, I'm going to say that again. Some of you are going off of word and things that you were given in the last season. Some of you are holding on to things and you're eating from tables that you shouldn't be eating at. Because see, even in the midst of eating, you have to be careful as to what you eat. I'm not talking about the pigs and we know the things that are good for us. That's not where I'm going. What I'm talking about is stale food. What I'm talking about is watered down word. What I'm talking about is the word of God that has been twisted. I'm not, I'm talking about religion. I'm talking about the spirit of legalism. I'm talking about eating the things that don't bring life, but bring death. I'm talking about even eating from the table of the world because see the world can feed you all manner of foolishness. And we begin to eat. We begin to repeat. We begin to allow that to get into our innermost parts, that innermost being, because the word of God says it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but it's what comes out of his mouth. But even in the midst of eating, even in the midst of speaking, when you begin to internalize, when you begin to eat things, you become what you eat. In other words, the word of God says, don't let the book of the law depart from us. We're supposed to meditate on the word day and night. See, the more you eat, the more you're transforming. The more you eat, the more you're able to stay. And the more you eat, and I'm not talking about stale food. I'm talking about the daily bread. In other words, when you rise up in the morning and you begin to ask the Lord for your daily bread, you begin to ask the Lord to allow his word to be a lamp before you as he guides you. When you rise up in the morning, you're asking God to lead you because the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. When you wake up in the morning, that's when you begin to eat. We don't forget to 
to wash. We don't forget, forget to brush our teeth. Uh, we don't forget our coffee. Some don't even forget their cigarettes. Uh, some of us don't forget a lot of things. Uh, but can I tell you in this season, uh, incorporate the feast of the word. Uh, begin to eat the word like never before. Uh, and I guarantee you things are going to begin to change. Uh, if they don't change externally, uh, they're going to change internally. Uh, because you are now feeding like an eagle. Uh, remember, eagles don't eat dead things. Uh, it has to have life. Uh, Jesus says, my words are life. And they are spirit. When you eat more of him, when you eat more of the word, now you're transforming. And pigeons are scavengers. And scavenge means to go after anything that is wasted or discarded. You feed it off of waste and mess. See, everybody's not serving <laughs> the meat of the word. Everybody is not giving you what the word of God says. It may be watered down, but the truth is that Jesus says that my words are spirit and they are life. And the more you eat, some of you just change your diet. You don't need to gather anything and hold it up for another year or another day. You've entered into a new season and it's harvest time. So begin to eat the word of God and quit following. God can speak to all of us and he desires. He says that my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. But can I tell you, change your diet in this season. Stop feeding off of dead things. Let me give you another example. When you're hearing all of this stuff that's going on in the world, I'm not saying it's not news. I'm not saying it's not fact. But the more you allow that to get into your very being, then you're gonna to begin to meditate on that thing. Then you're gonna to begin to become fearful. You're gonna forget who you are and what manner of man you are. You're gonna forget and you're gonna start following the ways of the world instead of eating the manna from heaven. Jesus told his disciples that his meat is to do the will of his father. So remember you're an eagle and you don't eat dead things. And eagles test before trusting. Can I say that again? Eagles test before trusting. And that's something that we don't do. We trust everybody. We let all people come into our services. We let all men or people pray for us. We let all men or people just say anything they want to without testing or trying the spirit by the spirit. But because eagles test before trusting, it says that the female eagles pluck or get a branch, a twig off of a tree. And as she flies up, she holds it in her talons and she begins to fly. And the higher she goes and she gets to a certain altitude and she'll drop the twig. Now in order <laughs> for that mate or the one that's trying to hook up with her or mate with her, he has to catch that twig or that stick before it hits the ground. And then if he catches it before it hits the ground, then they consider that a suitable mate. And I'm giving you the scripture on try the spirit by the spirit. That's first John four and one. And as believers, we have to understand that the world is teaching a different Jesus. But because we have not feasted on the word, because we don't know the word, then we're not able to discern if it's real or if it's a counterfeit. Because the enemy will come as the angel of life. But the more you eat, and I ain't talking about the dead things, but also even in the place of trusting and testing. And also, eagles have the ability to train. So even all of these characteristics as an eagle makes for good leadership as well. But an eagle prepares for training. And when they have kids, it says they remove Mm. the feathers and the soft grass from the nest. In other words, they're preparing their eaglets, if you will, to fly. And so because the eagles have become so comfortable, they will either take them out and drop them. And they said that once they begin, if they don't flap, then of course mom's gonna swoop down and she's gonna grab them. But after a while, she'll put them back in the nest. But because she knows that it's not their nature just to be complacent, it's not their nature just to sit and not doing anything, they were called to soar. And so she's preparing them, but she knows from 
them not flying, that they're not quite ready, but I've got to make it a little uncomfortable. Can I tell you that God is making things so uncomfortable for you because he needs you to get out of the nest. He needs for you to realize that you're an eagle and it's time to soar. He needs for you to understand who you are and what manner of person that you are. So he makes things uncomfortable. It says that she removes the feathers. She starts removing the soft grass. She starts to remove all of these things so that the eagle will realize that it's time for me to get out of here. I can't stay in this nest always. See, there are some things that are so uncomfortable comfortable for you. And God says, I have to have it that way. Because if I don't, you're going to stay here too long. But if I continue to move things and it's causing you to be pricked, it's causing you to be uncomfortable. It's causing you just like a woman in labor. After a certain time, I don't care what you do. In that ninth month, there's nothing you can do. You become so uncomfortable. You're just waiting for the time so that you can give birth. That's what it is like in this season. God is waiting for you to mature. He's waiting for you to grow up. Some of you are still in a small basket. Some of you are still on milk. And God says, I need you to be on meat because there is something over the horizon that I need for you to understand that you're not a pigeon, that you're not a chicken, you're not a vulture, but you are an eagle. So whatever I have to get you to do, if I have to allow them to stick you, if I have to allow the sorrow or suffering to poke you, I need for you to get out of this place of idleness, this place of depression this place of death. You're not going to die here, but you're going to live. Somebody needs to understand it's getting uncomfortable. So you can either die or you can fly. The choice is yours. And the last thing about an eagle, it says that after a while, an eagle, it says that they possess vitality. It says that as the eagle gets old, then their feathers become weak, and they cannot take him as high or her as high as they need to fly. And it makes them to the point, and it says that the chest feathers begin to press up against the eagle. So it affects their altitude as well. And it says that after a while, the eagle has to make a choice. This is your season of making a choice. Remember, it's harvest time. What are you going to harvest in this season? Remember, you are an eagle and it's time to soar. And so it says that after the eagle, they said this is when the eagle gets about 30 years old and it begins to take assessment because it feels like it can't fly that high. It realizes that it's losing the grips on its talents. It realizes that its vision is going a little bit dim. It realizes that I need to get to a place because I, I don't want to die in this place. But what I have to do, see, there's a renewing and a rebirth of an eagle is what it's called. It's so the eagle realizes, you know what? I can't fly like this. I can't even live like this. I can't even hold on to anything. I can't even get out of the altitude or to an altitude to where the enemy can't lay hands on me. And it says that the eagle makes a decision. And with that decision, the eagle gets into the rocks and it gets alone by itself. And it says that after a while, the eagle begins to bang its mouth or its beak up against the stone wall or the mountainside and what it's doing is causing the beak to be loosened so it can come out. See, you realize that if my beak or if my mouth is not able to hold the word, in other words, if my mouth is not going to speak anything but life, but the eagle knew it was the source of nutrients. It was the source of his sustenance. It was the way he ate. It was what he was holding on to and even maybe fighting, but it become a little loose. It become a little worn and tattered. So he gets into that place, that secret place and it begins to bang its beak up against the wall or against the mountain I'm sorry or the rock and it falls off but he stays there long enough and when the beak begins to grow back then what he does it reaches over and it looks at all of these talons that's on him I'm sorry all of the feathers and it begins to pluck the feathers out with his beak because he knows that this Mm -hmm. this feather, this is too much weight. So he begins to pull off all of these old habits, all of these old desires, all of these old memories, all of this old sin. And he says that because, see, I'm in this place, I'm being transformed and I can't have anything on me that's going to affect my altitude and my strength. So God, whatever it is that don't give you pleasure, help me to gird up my mouth, God. Help me to put a watch over my mouth and keep the doors of my lips. Father, help me not to speak death, but life. 
life. Father, if it's my mouth that's causing my flesh to sin, and so when the Greek beat grows back and he's pulling out all of these talents, it could be negative words, but he knows that this weight is weighing him down, and so he has to get a different start. And so after the mm, feathers go, then the new ones come in, but he stays in that place, and then it says that he goes down and he begins to pull out his talents because he realizes that he's not able to grip. He's not able to hold on like he used to. So in the, when he can't hold on and when the beak is messed up, then it messes with their system and they can't eat. Can I tell you, somebody needs to mm, allow God to bless the works of your hands because that what you're going on to and even ask the Lord to teach your hands to make war because in this season, what you're holding on to, you're not gripping. There's a word that see, said that we hold on to and we grip the anchor of the solid rock. We got to grip him like nothing be never before. You have to hold on. Remember, I said to be steadfast and unmovable. It's time for you to hold on to the word of God. It's time for you to become tenacious. It's time for you to get into that place until all of these things are gone away. And it says that after a while, when the beak grows back, when the talents grow back, when the feathers are, are strengthened or they renewed. They've been pulled down, but new ones grow. See, some of y'all in a season of growth, you're being transformed because God called you to soar and not to walk. Mm. And so it says that once all of this has been done and the eagle has gotten to themselves, don't be afraid of the isolation at this time. Remember, you've been called to be separate. Remember, even before the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan, they had to consecrate themselves. This is a new season, so take the time and let God strip and move away all of the things that doesn't give you pleasure, him pleasure, to strip all of the things that keep you thinking like you are a slave. You have been released from bondage. He brought you out of Egypt. He brought you through the storm. He brought you through the waters and you didn't drown. They didn't overtake you. This is the season to get in to that place and allow God to remove those things. He's going to cause new ones to grow back. Have you ever noticed when you prune a tree that the dead things are coming off? It's the same way with the eagle. Anything that will affect his ability to fly high and fast will affect his vision so he can no longer see. He had enough sense to choose. I'll either fly, I'll either change, or I'll die. And it says that when all of these things grew back, they said that the eagle would take its, I want to call it a glory fl fight, flight, a glory flight. In other words, it says that the eagle is now stronger. It flies higher than it did before. Can I tell you, this is your season of change. And if you'll allow God to finish what he started, don't be moved because you got to make a decision. Am I going to live or die? Sometimes it looked like a bloody mess. I can only imagine with that eagle everywhere because the talents come out, the beak, the feathers. But can you have enough trust in God to say, God, I'll go through it for your glory. God, I'll go through it. If it's going to make me better. God, I'll go through it because I know it's not your desire that I die here. You said I was an eagle and I have all of these characteristics within me. So father, in this season, cause me to remember who I am. And according to Isaiah 40 and 31, and I'm gonna read it into your hearing, but those who wait, the word wait means to hope with an expectation to trust. They that wait for the Lord shall renew He's going to renew you. He's going to refresh. He's going to revigorate you. Their strength. They shall mount up. He's going to cause your wings to mount up with wings like eagles. They are going to run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. It's time for you to soar. Time out for all the other things that we've become accustomed to. Welcome to September. What? Welcome to harvest time. But most of all, I pray you realized who you are and it's time for you to soar. It's time to soar. It's time to eat the good of the land. It's time. And so I just want to open up the doors of the church, if you will. <laughs> to all of you who may not know Jesus and the partner you're saying, those are just looking for a place to come and to study the word so that you too can soar.
like an eagle. We're going to help you because we're all eagles. And we tend to one another. One passage that I was studying says that as the eagle is going through its transformation time, because it's not able to soar or to hunt food, other eagles are soaring. And they will come and they will drop food down to them so that they won't get hungry. Can I tell you? Gam is like that soaring eagle. We want to drop food down to you. We want you to eat and not only just eat from what's given, but learn how to fight and soar for yourself. So if you want to be a part of us, we will welcome you. There's information on our website as to how you can become a member. We invite you. Get out of that place. You weren't meant to die in the pit. It's time for you to soar. Amen. And for those... if Sowing a seed. If you would want to sow into this ministry, because I tell you, we're a movement. We're soaring high. We are a good plant. We're talking about harvest. We know that because we are who we are and God is who he is, we'll never want anything. Call it seed time and harvest. If there is no seed in the ground, how can you expect a harvest? So again, I want to say, begin to sow. And for those that don't know Jesus in the part of, pardon of your sins, if you would just repeat after me, Jesus, I acknowledge you as the son of God. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I know that you died and on the third day rose again and now sits at the right hand of the father. I ask you to come into my life, Jesus, and take control. I want to say welcome to the kingdom. But most of all, for those that are looking for a church home, welcome to GAM virtual church we're here we'll love on you back home amen and just know that as you give it shall be given back to you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over it's time to soar i turn it over to for our announcements god bless you all If you would like to sow into this movement and financially support the initiatives that we're doing at Global Apostolic Movement, we have five ways for you to do so. You can visit our website at www.gamovement.org to give by credit or debit card. We're on Cash App at dollar sign GA Movement. We're on PayPal and Zelle at our email address gamovement21 at gmail.com, and also the Givelify app under Global Apostolic Movement. We also invite you to become a covenant partner of Global Apostolic Movement. We are a global movement for the 21st century saints, and for more information on how to become a covenant partner, please visit our website at www.gamovement.org. Click Connect then click Covenant Partners. Global Apostolic Movement has launched our outreach ministry, and we invite you to join us as we seek to connect globally with those in need. If you're interested in supporting, please be on the lookout for information that will be posted on our social media pages. We thank you in advance for your assistance in helping us with our passion to help others. GAMS Virtual Church invites you to become a member of our faith community, empowering faith, uniting hearts, transforming lives. We are a vibrant community dedicated to spiritual empowerment and growth, fostering meaningful fellowship, offering prayer support and intercession, and providing opportunities for outreach. Ready to take the next step to your spiritual journey? Join us today. Simply send us an email at gamovement21 at gmail.com to become a member. We can't wait to welcome you into the GAM Virtual Church family. You can meet us back here next Sunday and every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. for our virtual church services. However you are tuning in now is the way that you can join next week. We are on the same Zoom meeting ID every week and Facebook Live at Global Apostolic Movement. And now for our benediction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We want to take this time, praise God, to thank God for those of you who gave to this ministry. Praise God. Your seed will contribute to the growth of God's kingdom. For those who weren't able to give, we thank God for your heart to give. Praise God. 
If you did not have a chance to give, praise God, at the end of this service, you may be able to give. We will display the flyer on the screen, which we have given you, which we will have given you the information that you may be also to give and to contribute, praise God, to this outreach source that we have to God's kingdom. Father God, we thank you for those that gave and those that couldn't give. We thank you for the ones, Lord, that had the heart to give but didn't have it to give. Lord, we ask you to bless their cup that it may be overflowing with your love, with your mercy, and with your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. Thank God for the pastor, for a powerful message this morning. Praise God. A word of God. Remember who you are. Praise God. Don't let nobody tell you who you are in Christ. Praise God. Remember who you are and what God has done for you and what God is continually doing for you every day of your life. Praise God. We are the children of the living God. Praise God. And we have no right to fear anybody. Praise God. Praise God, the scripture says, if you have fear, praise God, you have not been made perfect in love because, because of the fear you have, praise God. But we know, praise God, that if we love God, if we keep his word, praise God, if we walk in his ways, praise God, that God is our God and he is a living God, praise God. And we have to remember who we are in God and who God is in us, praise God. Remember who God is, praise God. And look at yourself and remember who you is in God. Jesus said, my followers, no man can snatch them out of my hand, praise God. And that we will not follow a stranger, praise God, because we don't know who he is. We don't understand the word of a stranger. When God's word has been planted in your hearts and your mind, that's who you follow. Praise God. We live by the word of God. So remember who you are in God and remember who God are in you. And don't let nobody try to persuade you from who you are. You know who you are in God and you know who God is. Praise God. He's the creator of all things. He's your father. He's the one that created us. He's the one that fashioned us in his own image. We know who we are in God. Praise God. God, and we don't let nobody try to persuade us otherwise, praise God, not through the craftiness, through the cunningness of words, the way men try to deceive you and leave you away from the word of God, meditate on God's word, God told Joshua to meditate on it day and night so you know who God is, praise God, and once you know who God is, know who you are in God, praise God, what a powerful message, praise God, remember who you are. That's what you got to do. You got to remember who you got. It doesn't matter what the world says about you. It doesn't matter what your friends say about you. It doesn't matter what kind of gossip they say about you. Remember who you are in God and God who, is who God is in you. Praise God. And once you have that stood fast faith in God, praise God, Jesus said, I'll be with you always until the end of the world. Say, I won't leave you or forsake you, but remember who you are. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus, praise God. And he said, once you do that, I will keep you in my perfect peace. I will keep you in my peace. But remember who you are in God. Powerful message, praise God. That was a powerful message. Praise God. And that's something we can feed on the Bible. So he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, you shall be filled. Hunger for the words of God. Like you do for the natural food, hunger for the word of God. And may it let it become an everyday part of your life. Powerful message, Pastor. Powerful message. Praise God. Now, benediction. Praise God. It's benediction. Praise God of what God told Moses to tell Aaron to bless the people of Israel. Praise God. And this is the blessing that we have from God in our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, praise God. You are God bless you. You are now dismissed from this virtual service. Praise be to God. Mm -hmm.